Hello and welcome. My name is Rohini Rato, and today I want to speak about communicating with influence, communicating for influence, and in general, powerful communication. Now, obviously, this particular video may be relevant to you if you are in a career situation and you want to speak up and be heard, but it equally applies in your personal life, you know, whether you're talking to friends or your family members or even children, because the idea of communication is that it doesn't happen in a vacuum. You know, we are not generally in broadcast mode. Uh, we are hopefully um, at the end, other end of our communication, having people who are listening or reading or in some way reacting to what we have to say. So it is interactive. So here are my five simple rules. And I'm first going to just pull up a screen and hopefully it's going to come up. Yes, it has, which is great. So um, if I can just play the side slideshow for you here. So what we have is powerful communication, whether it's in your personal life or your professional life. And the ideally what you want is to make an impact and be remembered. That's essentially what communicating for influence is all about. That you know you have an idea, you have something to say, and that you are reaching an audience that they're actually taking in what you have to say and they're remembering you for it. And hopefully, depending on what the message is, that they're willing to act upon it. So here are my five simple rules of powerful communication. There are probably many, many more, but I want to keep it simple. But before I do that, I want to lead with a story. I want to tell you a story about this man um, whose story was actually in Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And it's in the... Um, new edition called the how to, in, how to Win Friends and Influence People in the Digital Age. So I don't know if it's in the original book as well, but it's in that new version of the same classic. And in that he talks about this particular gentleman who was extremely successful at getting job offers at every single interview he ever went to. I mean, it's an amazing feat. And so they asked him, you know, what, what is it that you do? I mean, how is it? That they all love you and they want you to come and work for them. And this is what he says. He says, when I go into a job interview, uh, first of all, I take the trouble to really um, get to know the company I'm seeing. You know, I do my research. Um, I also get to know who is going to be interviewing me. So if, if, you know, that's available information, he does his research to see who is going to be interviewing him. And then when he's in the interview, he really takes an interest in the people who are interviewing him. So he asks them lots of questions that come from a place of genuine interest and he listens. And um, the result is that the people who come to interview him feel so good about themselves. You know, they feel like the most interesting people in the world and they enjoy it so much that they want him to be there all the time and make them feel that way. So there's a great lesson in here that when you go into a situation like an interview, which is the ultimate opportunity to influence somebody, is that most people go in there thinking that they need to come across as really impressive and they have to be very interesting and they have to make an impact uh, so that they stand out against all the other, you know, competition. But what this particular story reminds us is that actually, at the end of the day, people remember you when you make them feel good, when you make them feel like they're the most interesting, the most impressive people in the room, not the other way around. OK, so bear that story in mind. And with that, now we're going to go into our five simple rules. So rule number one is be present. Um, and if any of you have ever watched improv, you know, you've actually learned how to improvise, you know, in the moment, uh, that is it. The rules of improv are always yes and. So whatever comes your way, you accept it, you take the challenge and you add value to it. So you don't sort of, you know, you don't sort of put roadblocks. You don't say, oh, no, but, but this is not what I had in mind. You acknowledge that this is what you've been given and this is what you're going to go with. To be that, you have to be really present. 
you can't be thinking about your shopping list or you know uh, some work that's waiting for you when you get back home or when you you know get back to your desk you have to be completely in the moment and going with the flow there are many other rules of improv if you're interested go and take a look on google and learn how improv is done but you know the key thing is to be present and really be willing to go with the flow the second rule of powerful communication is to be open-minded. And what this means is you come into a situation, clearly you will have your own you know, um, intention of what you're gonna get out of that communication. You may have your own sort of prior knowledge, but when you're in that conversation, when you're actually in that room communicating with people, suspend a judgment and adopt the beginner's mindset because you just never know what you will learn about something that is going to change how you think about the thing that you knew so well. And as someone said to me recently, you know, you only ever know what you have learned previously, but that is not the sum total of what there is to know. So be open-minded and go in with a beginner's mindset. Thirdly, is to be interested in the people, in the subject, in the conversation that is happening around you. Because it shows, you know, to, to, to give that example that we talked about earlier, this gentleman who got every single job offer, he went into these meetings already with the intention of being interested in the people he was going to meet. It wasn't about, you know, did they impress him, you know, through the things that he read about them? No, no, no. He knew that however ordinary, however mundane their job description or, you know, their personality that there was something about them that could be interesting, that he could bring to life with the right kind of questions. Now, to be interested, there are a few things in there. I'm going to talk through these. One is to obviously be willing to really ask open-ended questions and slightly out of the ordinary questions about somebody. So they're not going to be your run-of-the-mill questions, you know, that you might have learned about them through reading publicly available information. It's something that brings something to light that tells you what kind of person they are. It could also be questions that actually bring them alive, you know, and they talk about things that they're passionate about because in that moment, you're going to learn something about this person that perhaps they've not even shared with anybody else. And ultimately, it's about really, really listening listening to what they have to say, following it up with um, questions that show that you're still interested in them and that you want to know more. That ultimately it's about them and not you. The next one is to be interesting. Now, even when you ask questions, the way you ask questions show what kind of person you are. You know, you are going to ask the kind of questions that make this person think, wow, this person has really thought about what they want to learn from this encounter with me. But equally, when it's your turn to speak, you know, that is your time to shine, to show what you bring to that conversation. And to do that, there's a couple of things you need to remember. That communication is not this kind of you know, random stream of words that are come, coming from your brain. Because, you know, our brains will have lots of things going on. And often we forget that other people can't look into our brains and see what's going on there. So we need to help them. So it really helps to take a moment to process the question that has been asked of you or process the topic that you have been asked to speak about and think, how can I really make my communication clear, concise, and memorable. Clarity, keeping it short and sweet and within the time you're given, and making it memorable. Making it memorable has several elements to it, which are similar to the rules of improv, using humor, using stories, using analogies and metaphors, are some of the ways in which you can do that. But also to build upon things that you have already heard. So you actually are adding value to what's already been imparted. Don't repeat things that have already been talked about unless you have something new to say on a 
in a subject that's already been discussed. Okay, so that's how you be interesting. Um, and then of course, there's other elements to it, you know, in the way you speak, your body language, you know, it's a huge topic, you know, how to communicate well is, is not something that we can just do in five minutes. But you know, these, these are some things you can keep at the back of your mind, and you can start practicing. And finally, it's how are you going to add value? How are you going to add value to a topic which maybe the people in the room are already very familiar with? Perhaps they don't all have a beginner's mindset. Perhaps they all don't have this non-judgmental attitude to hearing what you've got to say. Even for those people, you need to find a way to add value. And you can do that by sometimes asking them questions. What do you think? What do you want to know? How do you feel? What's your feedback from what you've just heard? So again, it comes back to making it about them, making it about a shared purpose, making it about the business, making it about the community, making it about something much, much larger than you. So how will they remember you? And what will they remember you for? That is what influence and that is what powerful communication is all about. Storytelling is a great way to do that. Um, getting people to share their own opinions and views is another wonderful way for making them feel interesting and relevant and heard. So there's a number of things in there. They kind of tie into one another. But if you can just remember, you know, be present, which means really listening and being in the moment and going with the flow, being open minded, not coming in thinking, well, I'm an expert. I already know this. I don't need to be here, in which case you won't be present. You are already thinking that there's nothing in this conversation that's going to add value to me in which case you have already checked out and people know it. People can tell when somebody's not really listening. Be interested in the people who are there, however mundane or irrelevant they may seem on, on, you know, on um, paper or by just looking at their personality. Be interesting in a way that's going to make people feel like you have something to say that they will remember you for. And finally, add value in a way that is very, very win-win. It's very, very collegiate, but at the same time, it brings something that you uniquely have offered to this particular situation, okay? So this is about me, in case you don't know who I am. So I work with leaders and helping them to become self-aware and you know develop self-belief and also become more mindful in their behavior towards others, so acting with greater self-control. And I bring a wealth of experience from my previous career, but also in some things that I learned, both in my previous career in wealth management and what I do as a coach. And this is all I wanna say about me. So ultimately, I think when you make an impact and be remembered, that's when you start to really influence people and you start to create the change that you wish to see. I hope this has been useful. If you've got any feedback or any questions or you want some more details on the things we talked about, please get in touch. I would love to hear from you.